Inspiration for Teachers podcast, bringing you dynamic and inspirational educator interviews. Our fascinating guests share their professional challenges and creative resolutions for success. Discover their workable strategies, ideas, and resources to reach your educational goals. And now your host, Kelly Long. Hello and welcome to another episode of Inspiration for Teachers. I'm so pleased you've joined me on this episode as we're now at the end of season four, the Teachpreneur series. So this episode today is all about why developing an online course might be a good fit for you as an educator. So the first thing I want to dive into is the skills and the knowledge. You've already got so many skills that are a natural fit for an online course and that most people who develop online courses do not have. And that specifically is, you know how people learn. You have been trained specifically to develop content that allows a student to progress from a position of no knowledge to a position where they are competent and capable using a certain set of skills. Now, most people don't have that in this environment. So you're really primed to be able to develop engaging, exciting content that really helps a targeted set of students to move forward. You also know what it takes in order to build really good quality content. And you've probably already got a stack of teaching resources that are already doing that. So it's quite easy to go back through all of your existing teaching toolkit and identify what resources you can use or from your wider toolkit as to what resources you rely on in order to help people learn. Now, what I really like about online courses is that As a teacher, you love helping people to learn. You like really getting into your subject content and developing it in a way that helps to break it down for a student as to what it is they need to learn, what skill set do they need to have. And you're very good at being able to craft that for them and take them through a learning process. And I find that really exciting and it can be really inspirational. And you probably feel the same way too. But as a teacher, You know all the other things that you have to do. You know, you have to mark books regularly, so feedback to pupils, which is important. You have to attend meetings. You have to keep on top of their attendance. You have to have conversations with parents. So it's not just being able to do good teaching and learning and develop good quality teaching resources. But the one thing that I know, and if you're like me as a teacher, you will definitely wanting to be doing this all the time and hopefully you are but I know if it's niggling away at you you definitely want to create the best resources that you possibly can and sometimes you can feel that that's not always possible because you have so many other commitments that you have to do in your teaching job. Now the thing is with an online course is that you own it you know you have an objective which is to get a group of students or an individual student to a certain outcome, but you already know how to do that. The great thing that you can do is you can get so much personal satisfaction out of creating this content because it's what you love to do. It's what you want to share. You want to share the love and the passion that you have for your subject and you want to give it to somebody and help them to experience it in the same way that you appreciate it. And the great thing about an online course is you can do all the amazing stuff that you really, 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 really wish you could do in class all of the time. So this is why it's also a great, great opportunity for you to develop an online course because it gives you that creative outlet. It gives you the opportunity to develop the best thing that you possibly can without side interruptions of people pulling your time in other directions and you having to show that you have done this and that you have done that and that you're meeting all these other objectives which are maybe set down by your school, set down by your wider educational community, but doesn't actually really get to the heart of helping somebody to move from a position of not knowing something about a subject to moving to a position of being highly accomplished. And an online course can give you that creative outlet as well as matching your skills and knowledge to a set outcome which is helping a student to get to where they want to be. But sometimes I recognize that when it comes to thinking about, okay, well, you know, I'd really love to do that, but where do I start? It can be quite challenging to actually be the individual reflecting on yourself and thinking, what skills and knowledge do I have that people would want to pay for? 
Now, if you've been listening to the Teachpreneur series, you should have listened to episode 85 with John Colley. And I want to just take you there to something that he said. He said that when you're thinking about developing an online course, of course, you should do all of your research to see whether there's a demand for the topic that you're interested in creating a course for. But he said, what is the problem that you solve? And that in itself can be quite a difficult question to answer. So another way of looking at it is saying, well, what are the questions that people ask me all the time? The problems that they're asking me to solve for them or the problems that they're asking for guidance on because they're really struggling to either do it for themselves, understand it, process, take action on it and move forward. Now, I was thinking about this a lot when I was thinking, oh, I would really like to create an online course because I can see how it fits in quite naturally with what I do anyway. And I'd really like that creative outlet. And I'd really like to extend what I know to a wider field of people, but also develop really high quality learning content. And so I thought really long and hard about what problems do I solve? And and maybe it was fate and, and maybe it was just naturally in the teaching cycle when this question was posed to me. But the thing that seemed to come up often, and maybe it was around the time when I was having parents evening was, The conversation with parents about how do I help my child to revise? How do I put in place a a program that really supports them? Or what is it that I can do to ensure that they get a successful set of qualifications? And then there was the regular conversations I was having in class with students. Now, that may have been at the end of assessments. A lot of it was usually around when they were doing their mock examinations and they were getting their grades back. Irrespective of the initial guidance I had given them, they were still getting to a point where they were just being quite negative about their whole approach to passing their exams and revising effectively and and the struggles that they were really battling against and the barriers that they couldn't seem to move beyond. And then there was those students that had spent hours and hours and hours and hours revising that came to me and said, but I have spent all of this time revising and I still cannot get a good mark. And about that time, I started doing my master's degree and I was doing a lot of investigation for my dissertation about metacognition and the ways in which students learn to learn and and how can we help them move forward. So I was doing a lot of research there. And then naturally between the three, the parent conversation, the student conversation, my work and my research into my dissertation, and what I guess as a fourth I naturally do, which is teaching. I could start to see that there was this problem that I really needed to resolve for my students or help them in the process of getting over those hurdles, those learning barriers, the the barriers to passing your exams effectively. So for me, I decided to create an online course because there was that natural fit and I really wanted to help my students so I could then go on and help a wider range of students. I basically created an online course. It's called How to Pass Exams but it sits under an umbrella of a brand that I've created called My Revision Pal. And what I've done is I've taken everything that I know to be effective when it comes to revision and learning, and I've developed a module course that takes students through a complete revision program. Now, as an educator, you may have seen people coming into your school to deliver workshops about um, how to revise or use these strategies when it comes to revision. And Students are taken through, why don't you try this? Why don't you try this? And the conversations that I've had with my students have been, well, that doesn't really help me. (laughs) And I still don't really know how to do it. And the thing is with that is students really need an effective process. They need a system in place that they can use and that they can develop. And for me, I really felt that that was lacking. So this is why I created my Revision Pal. It solves that problem of how to pass exams by specifically looking at a revision system that focuses them in on the two most effective revision skills. Now, there are lots of different revision techniques that are available for students to use. But as part of the research that I did, I uncovered that there are only two effective out of the 10 most common ones that students fall back on. So I've taken those two specific ones and I have tried and tested it multiple times to see Does it actually work? Does it get results? And it does. I've got students that have been through the course and they have managed to shift their grades up or they have managed to develop my system, apply it to their own environment 
and then they have been able to pass their exams. That is really, really worth something. And the great thing about creating this online course is that it not only helps a wider range of students, it provides and generates an income for me, and I own that asset. So I can do anything with it. If I wanted to then turn it into a speaking gig, I could do that. If I wanted to develop it into an extended series of workshops to help parents and students, I could do that. But I now own that asset and it sits on Thinkific and on my website. So even if I'm not doing anything to promote it, which I do, people can find it and they can access that course. So I just wanted to share that with you because when you're thinking about creating an online course, there is initially that stumbling block of, I don't think I have anything to offer and I don't think people would want what I have to share and I don't think I have the skills. But as a teacher, I guarantee you already have so many skills that you can use and you can develop that content into an online course and share it with so many more people. Now, I think that is really valuable and it might be just one path in which you want to pursue. If it's something that you're interested in, then please go back and listen to John Colley's episode. That's episode 85, because within there, there was a little offer that John wanted to give, which is allowing you to experience his online course about how to make profitable online courses. You can go to the website, inspirationforteachers.com, click on the link and you can download and access his course. Now that might be a good starting point for you. And if you're kind of thinking, well, what does it look like? What does an online course look like? You can take a look at my course. Go to myrevisionpal.com. You'll find the link to my course. In there, you'll be able to experience the first learning module. Now, that first learning module is about revision mindset, breaking down some of the learning barriers students face when it comes to preparing and getting their mind right when it comes to preparing for an exam and, and how do they go about revision and uncovering and dismissing some of the myths that they have about revision and learning. So you can go there, you can watch that module for free and you can begin to see how I have developed content in an online learning course platform. And if you have any feedback about it, please do drop me a message at inspirationforteachers at gmail.com. But now we are coming to the end of season four. I will be back shortly with season five which I cannot wait to bring to you. Please go ahead and subscribe. And also, if you're feeling really generous, then please do leave me a review and let me know what you think about the show. If you're picking this episode up at the tail end of season four, then season four is all about being a teachpreneur and developing the skills that you might need in order to move your existing education business forward. Or if you're thinking about becoming a teachpreneur, it's beginning to develop that mindset and thinking about where could you invest your time in order to develop an asset for yourself, income for yourself, but also really help a wide range of people because as a teacher, you have so many skills that you can give. So this is Kelly Long saying goodbye for another season. I really can't wait to see you on season five. Please stay tuned, please subscribe and wishing you a good couple of weeks. Thank you for joining us today on Inspiration for Teachers. For more resources, tips and advice, visit our website, inspirationforteachers.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, we would love to connect with you. Just click like on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash inspirationforteachers.